Welcome back to We Watch Movie. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And this is the extremely goddamn late, you ugly motherfucker review for The Predator. Fuck my face with an aardvark. That was it. Movie. That was it. Uh, and that's how that's how I felt the entire time watching it. Yeah. And you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, Thomas Jane having Tourette's was pretty much me watching this movie because sometimes great things would happen. You'd be like, <sighs> you're like, and then something really terrible and shitty would happen. You're like fucking tapes on the fucking mountain. Tapes. Tapes on the mountain. Tapes. Tapes on the mountain. Tapes. Yeah. So yeah, Thomas Jane's is which I didn't know going I, into it. I know. What's when he showed up on the bus, I was like, oh, motherfucker. All Thomas he's Jane. doing is he's he's doing the low key Punisher super secret thing. All the rapists and people that make bad films will come to know me well. <laughs> the Punisher. I'll be in them. He was, yeah. Uh, yeah, so The Predator, the long-awaited sequel, directed by Shane Black, who was in the first movie. Um, you know, fuck. It starts out so goddamn good. It starts out so good. This is where we have a disagreement, my son. Uh, well, uh, because I'm just going to say really quick, uh, it's, it does, as far as building up certain things about it, it does start out decent, but at the very beginning of the movie, when you have fucking spaceships flying through, and then they open up a portal, and it goes to the world. It looked like the unfound footage of Star Wars it, 9, it, the, chasing the, down Kylo Ren the, to get it done. It looked the, like shit. The spaceships did look a little bit Power Rangers movie. A little bit. I'll give you that, Jay. Uh, and they also were straight ripped off from Man of Steel, like the way the spaceships Yeah, they, they looked weird. But then again, I mean, like, Boyd Holbrook is... For me, I've never been that fascinated with Boyd Holbrook. Like, I didn't think that he was like that 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 Schwarzenegger, Danny Glover, Adrian Brody type lead character. He's for, a good actor, though. For a but predator, he's, not for that. he's all right. But to me, he just looks like that guy that you get that you catch trying to steal Grandma's pills. <laughs> like, he does. It was you. He was like Ryan Gosling in a Place Beyond the Pines. But you know, he's the leader. He goes. At you. I didn't steal shit from your grandma. I already <laughs> had my own supply. You see them on a mission or whatever, and then a spaceship crashes down. He discovers some alien shit, and then he goes on the run, and then this mysterious group uh, goes to capture him because they want to create a, him as a patsy because they've been, uh, they've oh, been researching. It's, it's fucking complicated. I know. I'm they've so been researching aliens already. or predators for the longest time, and then there's, uh, as you saw in the trailer, there's a super predator. We didn't even get into the fucking plot. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, way, it's ridiculous. way too much. Basically, the plot should be this. A group of, of highly trained elite scorned elite uh, military people yep. who all have weird tics and problems and issues. Uh, they're like a gangster military unit uh, who are on this bus who are basically in military jail. I was fine with that. Are on the run from a super predator. Meanwhile, the main guy, Bo Boyd Holbrook's son, has Asperger's syndrome and he's somehow been connected to the whole situation. He has to protect his son. Meanwhile, he creates a bond with this group of guys, and they're all on the run, trying to run from. Well, a bond slash, is stretching it. Yes, run from slash kill this predator. So, and and this is the thing. First off, the fucking music. That that was the only. It's the perfect nutshell of the movie, though. Well, but it's I like so good. I like the original. Yeah, the when they they actually reintroduced the original soundtrack from the Predator, and that yeah. was fucking awesome. And by the way, I made a discovery while watching it that that song is what comes on when anybody is called in early on, or their day off, like your boss calls from your cell phone. That song comes on. That that fucking Predator music. You're like, no. Uh, for me, that song comes on when a bunch of fifth graders invite you to play basketball with them, and then you're like fucking Shaq, and you're like dunking on him and blocking him left and you right. Do that, you do the whole like he. Vision and yeah. you're like oh, my my goal to the route is like my goal is right here through the five year olds to dunk the basketball. But they even fucked that up. Just like that music, that 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 fucking Alan Silvestri music is so intense and amazing uh, from the original John, uh, John McTiernan film. It's so great that even in the shitty parts of the film, when it plays, you can't help but get jacked to the tits. But, but yeah. then later on, they yeah. try to add this modern music over it, and it's so fucking noticeable, and it doesn't fit, and it sounds like just some shitty ass superhero music that it even fucks that Well, up. you know, look, I didn't know I was going in to watch a fucking Archie and Jughead comic book come to life. Like, there was a lot of Saturday morning cartoon shit with this with, like, highly, like, really gravitas, like, death scenes in it. Like, the fight scenes were bloody and they were disgusting. Uh, not, I mean, not disgusting. I mean, they were we're not talking about cannibal holocaust with tits, but we're talking about, like, at least... Predator-esque type of kills. I've been to bars. However, <laughs> I've been to bars at 3 a.m. on Wednesdays. Uh, but yeah, it, but still, even though it's such a juxtaposition from the original story, like what's going on with what they're doing in the movie, it just it feels like I was watching a DLC for Injustice 2. It's like, oh, that shit looks fucking dope. Horny as fuck. And look, yeah, because. Even the fight scenes, as cool as they were, and there were some cool fight scenes, like the, the first seventy-five percent. Well, when the yeah. aliens are like, well, specifically when the aliens laying on the operating table and Predator. wakes up, 
Well, I said alien. I know it's a predator. No, okay. Why are you calling it that? It's actually more of a hunter, right? It's more of a hunter, right? No, they're called predators. By the way, that whole conversation was bullshit. And especially when Olivia Munn gets down to his face like, you were one beautiful motherfucker. I'm like, but anyway, uh, yeah, well that whole scene, it was just corny and, and, and like, even though they were cool fight scenes, it was a lot of CG bullshit. Like, it looked so CG in a lot of scenes too. Eventually, like, dude, the, to me the first half of the movie was really good. <laughs> How much crack did you smoke off a stripper's ass? Fuck a hot dog. Um, no. <laughs> Dude, the first half of the movie, I was into it, like totally into it. The opening scene when the, there's a shot where the, the predator's green eyes show up and he fucking looks at him underneath some blood, and you're yeah. like, "This shit's gonna be great. It's gonna be good." I don't understand people's problem. Uh, all the way up to one of the breakout scenes in the lab, the way the predator fucks people up left and right, it's badass. Like the gore is on point. It's entertaining as fuck. The music's there. It's so good. The second that the crew meets for the first time in the bus, it gets so. The dialogue is so terrible. You remember X Men uh, Wolverine Origins? Yeah. You remember? when they're in the plane nah. together, that terrible dialogue, yeah. it's that minus a thousand. They were trying to do what they did in the first Predator with the, with the helicopter, but it was so corny. Like, everything someone said, they were like, uh, okay, here's Thomas Shane. Hi, I have Tourette's. I've got a problem with this guy. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I fuck, come fuck, from yeah. here. Like, everyone gave their own dialogue, and it was so corny and awful and just terrible. Yeah, and then while even, no. even when the guy was like, so what's your story? He was like, I killed a space alien. He's like, ha, 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 ha. And they all start laughing like it's the fucking room part two. And he's like, would you shut the fuck up? I killed space alien. <laughs> and then they're like, ha, 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 this boy, wow. He crazy. Yo, yo wow. He crazy. Martha McConaughey came and said, yo, wow. But yeah, it was, dude. Uh, it's corny. Yeah, and you know what? It wasn't like they lacked good actors. They had good actors in it. It was just the dialogue was so fucked. Like, you could not make that believable at all. Even if you had Mel Gibson and fucking Anthony Hopkins in those roles. It was video game acting. You couldn't do it. Yeah, it was like... A video game uh, writing. Yeah, it was like Resident Evil, the first original games. Like, it looks like a Jill Sandwich. Hi, my name's Jim, and I'm a badass, and I killed a guy once, so I'm not scared to kill you. As Mike laughed as he got a dildo in his butt. But yeah, but Did not. Yeah, in the Resident Evil original, when he was like... Um, you know, it was like, you know, I remember that open, like the original PlayStation, it was like Barry Burton, Chris <laughs> Wesker, Albert Wesker, yeah. and he goes, yeah. yeah, like it looked like that, it looked like shit, and then you get, like, even the, because in that, like, little short film they did for Resident Evil, when the plane's going and it looks like shit, she's like, don't go, wait, it was like that, like, it was just, ultimate level. It's like somebody forgot to write a fucking story. Like, it was like Shane Black and crew were like, no, 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 people just care about Predator fighting. Fuck, what's a story? Well, the a story? What are you talking about? Those parts, sometimes the Predator fighting scenes were cool. Like, Super Predator fucking this dude up. He was like Smokey and Fry. He's like, you just got knocked the fuck yeah, but dude, fuck I, out. Even when that I, was cool. It was, it was cool, but I felt like I was watching Hell in the Cell, WWE 2018. <laughs> but the, that's what I was going to say. You went into this expecting... Undertaker versus Macho Man. You went into this expecting like a really good boxing match with like talent, and you ended up coming out with like a shitty episode of WCW Nitro. Like sometimes it's entertaining. And the first half of the film, I had a lot of fun. But uh, And uh, the dude from Key and Peele, hilarious. George, yeah, he's some great. of the jokes that the crew makes are funny as fuck. And, and sometimes they come up with a one-line that really cracks you up and it's really funny and I wanted to like this crew and Thomas Jane is really good. I can't believe, but I, I, I still, it's so hard for me to believe. Thomas, Fuck me in the face with an art bark. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas Jane is so cool and awesome. Like, as, like, just Thomas Jane, the actor, like, I cannot believe he took a secondary, secondary role in this film and but Hollywood sees him that way, dude. Well, it's not just it's not ridiculous. Just movie. You like, wasted they, him. Like he's yeah. fucking great. I mean, Hollywood does it, not appreciate. If you, had, if you had made a better script, a better story overall, I would have cast him as the fucking lead and let him do his business. And him and the dude from Keen Peel and their relationship. Like how weird was that? I don't know like, what I that guess, was. I, I guess they were. I think they were supposed to be gay together, were they gay? which is cool. But I mean, like, I don't know if they actually said it or not. But it just seemed weird. It came out of nowhere. I don't know what happened. And then like, um, like I was the, drunk and it was tequila <laughs> and there was things. I don't know. It was we were in the jungle. And then the the kid, like the way that they try to tie Asperger's syndrome into this was the stupidest the next evolution fucking thing ever they show this kid Jacob Tremblay is a good actor um, uh, and they show him and the first thing they show him is, that, is in a school and like all that's happening right is an alarm's going off it's like a test right and these kids are picking on him and just because the alarm goes off he, because he has Asperger's he's like he's covering his ears and he's screaming and he's dealing with some shit and that's the first time you see him the rest of the movie it never gets mentioned again he's literally in the middle of firefights 
laughing, playing, doing one-liners, having a good time. It's like, okay, we have to we have to establish that this kid has Asperger's. And they never fucking mention well, maybe, it again. Maybe it was because they we want, need it for the plot. Well, it's possible that they wanted you to feel that because he was with the father. Like, it was a little bit more calming. I don't know. And I'm not, shittiest parents of the fucking year. I'm not, by the way, that chick, uh, his wife, is the girl from The Big Bang Theory, and she's still hot as fuck. Like, sure, but they're the worst Australian. parents of all time. This kid is at school by himself. First off, worst teachers, worst parents. Alarms going off. Nobody knows where the fucking kid is. Well, when the first kid off, has Asperger's. He comes home by himself, and then what, she's like, order a fucking pizza. And then the dad's not even in the picture, and then all of a sudden he shows up, and he's supposed to be great. Well, not, not only that, is I also felt like I was watching uh, Searching for Bobby Fisher part two when like he picks up the chess pieces and put them exactly back to where they were it doesn't tie into the plot at well, all well it does in a way because he's able to di uh, dissect the code of the predators and by the way the oh, whole idea fuck. behind the predator the name because they they call them the predators and they're like well how'd you come up with that name it's like well they hunt people for sport and this whole like Olivia Munn's like well that's actually a huntsman or whatever and like can you just not name them? Can we just not have a fucking name? Can you just stop your fucking mouth? Can you just shut your lips? Just shut your lips. Because they were ruining everything about the movie that I was hoping it would be. And also, the the main guy, a part of the the group that's investigating these predators, bad actor. Like I mean, I, no, he's not a bad actor. He's a good actor. Terrible. Oh, fucking I liked movie. him a lot actually. Yeah, I did, I hated him dude because even when uh Boyd, what was his name? Boyd, Boyd Holbrook. Bo Boyd Holbrook. That sounds like a fucking name you you make on 2K7 on fucking NBA. <laughs> like it just sounds fake. But anyway, Boyd Holbrook was like, when this is over, me and you, we got business unsettled. Was, that was a script fault. And, and then he was like, I got my dancing shoes picked out. I'm like, please. <laughs> Just don't say they any more words. So badly to have the machoism of the they first wanted, They want Carl Weathers and Arnold Schwarzenegger. They just forced it down your fucking throat, and it didn't work. It was funny though. Like there was there, that group did make some good chemistry at times. Like when Olivia Munn was waking up, and like the one dude made a unicorn. He's like, and the one really creepy guy, James Jesus, like I like girls. <laughs> <It's not really. laughs> I, I don't. It's the, great. The, the Jesus freak, I actually liked. I actually liked him when he was uh when he, when when you know they were trying to rally the troops when they were at uh, Boyd's house, and they were like. We gotta go out here. He's a great Marine. He's a great soldier. And he's like, y'all pussies. And he walks out. And then the Jesus freak goes up to the girl. And he's like, listen, your your speech was uninspiring. I'm gonna say that right away. <laughs> but nobody calls me a pussy and gets away with it. And that's what I liked that dude. There, there was good one-liners, man. Uh, yeah. Keenan, uh, fucking Keegan Michael Key was funny as fuck in the movie. Like I thought he was great. Thomas Jane was great. Um, but in the first half of it, I accepted it. You know what it was to me? The first half of this film was Halloween Six: The Curse of Michael Myers to me. Mm. It was stupid. The plot was batshit crazy. It was convoluted, over the top, confusing. They tried to do way too much. Uh, but it was weirdly fucking entertaining and I was having a great fucking time. The second half of the movie, it goes into full on CG, we want to be some sci-fi spectacle, bullshit, shitty story, shitty action, I was bored as fuck, and it went to dog shit, and especially that end scene, which we won't get into. Yeah, well, here, here's the thing, sauce. at the end of the day, uh, it's a very, very, very disappointing movie. They were trying to recreate what the Predator did, the original Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. and you can't, like, it, it came out at the perfect time, 1987, and it had the perfect cast, it was wrote really, really, really well, and there wasn't any of this, like, extraterrestrial conspiracy theory going on throughout the whole thing. They were trying to make this thing, thing like, AVP or some shit, and, like, it, I never bought into it. Like, the original Predator was cool and different and violent because you had like a very small story contained in a rainforest. It wasn't like some fucking overreaching goddamn plot they were trying to go with this like Star Wars bullshit where there's like, you know, predators are out there and they're coming to invade our planet and they want to take over the planet because they want to, you know, terraform it. Like, dude, get the fuck out of here with your Mazda. Give me a Corolla. Yeah, just give, S. Me, give me the um, uh, give me the uh, no escape Ray Liotta storyline. That's They're all hunting I want. humans. Like, try to escape. Like, Can you know you what? The best thing, the best attempt they've made with the Predator series since the first one was Predators with Adrian Brody. Underrated. Underrated as fuck. A great idea. A also great concept. Again, if you'll notice in that film and in the first one, it's a self-contained story. It's not overreaching. They're not trying to. The Predator Two movie with Danny Glover sucked so much dick. It's ridiculous that they're still alive. But the reason why that had a problem is the same reason this one. They tried to, you know, encapsulate a cityscape. They yeah. tried to, you know, bring in multiple elements to it. That's the problem. Like, we know that there's multiple predators. We get that. But we just want to see, like, if it had been a super predator versus, like, an elite team. Yeah, man. 
Bring back the first one. Bring back the original. Now, ultimately, dude, I'm gonna it I'm is. gonna be really nice to this movie. I'm gonna give it a six because I I really enjoyed the first sixty percent of the movie, even though it wasn't. Are you trying to be a Christian? It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't good. But I enjoyed it. It was Halloween 6 for me. Uh, and then the Damn. rest of it just went into straight up Walmart territory, so. Yeah, Walmart speaks the truth. This is a 3.0. This is like, I bought fucking boxes from Walmart and they ripped on the first fucking day. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, as I'm pulling them up and they ripped. Like, this Mr. Is why. Silk Underwear. Uh, no, 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 Mr. <laughs> Silk Underwear. Daddy. Uh, uh, yeah, it was, uh, a, it was a terrible fucking movie, guys. Like, I hated every goddamn bit of it for at least 85% of it. You liked it to a point. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. You're welcome. I did. Now suck on your fucking right. wiener. But anyway, uh, but either way, um, if you like Predator or Pina Coladas or Dancing in the Rain, don't go see this movie. Um, it's going to ruin your shits. I would say oh, wait. It's you. Wait till the fucking thing comes out on Netflix. That That is my recommendation. If you've never seen the movie, if you were kind of on the fence about going to see it, I honestly don't waste your time or money. Can't disagree with you there. We love your fucking faces. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button and get some goddamn whale up in you. Fuck me in the face with an aardvark. I already said it. I know, but I liked it so much it was due for thrice. Oh, that's a great band too. You don't even know a song by thrice. I, yeah, I do. We watched a movie. Uh -huh. mm. We watched a movie. We watched a movie.